We all have that friend who wakes up early to go get everyone McDonald's breakfast while the rest of us sleep in. This is your sign to thank them. And if you're that friend, this is us saying thank you. Just a friendly reminder that right now, get any size iced coffee before 11 a.m. for just 99 cents. And a satisfying sausage McMuffin with egg is just two seventy nine. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on ChumbaCasino.com. I looked over at the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's ChumbaCasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. VGW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Tricks, treachery, and trouble. That's what looms up out of the Indochina jungle plantation land for Terry Lee, young American, and his friends. But they've had good luck, too, as you'll hear about in today's transcribed adventure. Terry and the Pirates is brought to you by the makers of Libby's Tomato Juice, one of Libby's hundred famous foods. Now more than ever, it's up to all of us Americans to keep as strong and well as we possibly can. That's one of the best contributions we can make to winning the war. To keep well, you must eat the right things. And the right things can be swell tasting, too. Take Libby's Tomato Juice, for instance. My gosh, it's got a lot to offer. It gives you four extremely important vitamins. Yes, Libby's tomato juice is an excellent source of vitamin C and vitamin A and a good source of vitamin B1 and vitamin C. No wonder it's such a good idea to drink this fine tomato juice every single day. And boy, is it a treat. The red ripe juice of prized tomatoes. Refreshing, zippy, delicious. That's Libby's tomato juice. You know, every food that Libby can is famous for its goodness. Fruits and vegetables, meats and juices. You can count on anything labeled Libby's to taste just grand. You can count on nutritional value, too. Because Libby takes extra care to guard the vitamins and minerals and other food values that we need. Right after the show, boys and girls, ask your mother if she won't please get some if she won't please get some Libby tomato juice. Ask her to look for the name Libby on other canned goods too. Libby's is spelled L I B B Y S. And now, Terry and the Pirates. The Pirates, in this case, happen to be Baron de Plexus and his gang, who have a plantation not far from the village of Leokai. Also, a secret landing field from which they expect to carry out certain evil schemes. These plans are known to Terry and Pat Ryan, who have accidentally found Dylan Kane, the manager of another nearby plantation. Dylan, who is April's oldest brother, he has been imprisoned below ground in a ruined heathen temple in the jungle. But Terry and Pat were also trapped in this temple. Meanwhile, April Kane, Connie, and Big Stoop waited at Madame Stoop's small hotel for a word from the men. And then, an unsigned note, a scribbled map led Connie and Big Stoop to the ancient temple. There they found the secret entrance to the place. And now... Hot mongrel. Whew, fresh air and we're free again. Wow. Oh, this is wonderful. Top of the morning on top of the ground. Well, open up lungs and get a load of that sunshine and air. Oh, Terry, whatever you're saying goes double for me. Boy, does it feel good to come out of that temple and sit here in the daylight. It most certainly does, Mr. Lee. And I owe you my undying thanks, you and your friend, for this opportune rescue. Well, I guess Pat and I, I guess we owe Connie and Big Stoop our undying thanks, too, Mr. Kane. Don't forget, we were locked down that hole with you, and if Connie and Stoop hadn't come along... Yeah, if they hadn't opened that message addressed to you, and if there hadn't been a map, and if... In other words, if we hadn't come to Leo Kai, all this wouldn't have happened. And by the way, where is the Chinese boy, Connie, and his friend? Oh, Connie and Stoop are around here. They go wandering off investigating things. Well, I'm certainly glad they investigated this old temple. Well, did Connie give you that message, Terry, the one addressed to you? Yeah. Here it is. I can't think of anyone who would send this to me. Unless it was Slugger Dunn. Let's see, it says... 
Kid, you and your buddy are nice lads. I ain't sure, but I got a hunch the man you're looking for is where I got this map mark. It isn't sign. Oh, that sounds the way Slugger done would write. Yeah, and the envelope was addressed to the yellow-haired kid. That's you, Terry. Well, I don't know why Mr. Dunn should help us find Mr. Dillon. Guess who is this fellow? Dunn? Well, he's working for Baron the Plex. Yeah, we met Dunn on the train coming to Leo Kai. It's all a puzzle to me, Mr. King. And let me see the note, please. The note. Tune it up. Well, I wonder if we should pay a visit to Baron the Plex. What? Oh, I don't mean a social call. I mean we ought to have a look-see at the secret airfield. After what Mr. Kane has told us about the Baron's plans, well... I think Mr. Ryan's suggestion is good. There are some good reasons for this note and map being sent to you. Uh, Lee, you say it might be from this, uh... Slugger Dunn? Slugger Dunn, yes. Well, why should he send you a message? Is it possible that he plans to double-cross his boss, the Baron? And why should the message be sent to Madame Sue's hotel early this morning? I wish I knew all those answers. Of course, when that message and map were delivered at the hotel for me, well, Pat and I were back down below ground, trapped with you. Well, that proves something. It proves that Slugger Dunn didn't know where we were. He thought we were at the hotel. That's right. Gentlemen, this is all a puzzle. And sitting here any longer won't solve it. I vote that we start back along the trail. I can show you a shortcut across the Duplexus property. Takes us directly to his airfield. Well, then let's get going. I'm kind of steamed up about a visit, old sourpuss. I figure we owe him something for the trouble we've been to. But, Pat, Dylan Kane doesn't think Duplexus is the one who kept him prisoner down there beneath the temple. No, I don't think so, but of course it might have been the Baron. Well, now look. The Baron is the front man for the Dragon Lady. And that's the reason enough to butt in. And that's our real job, Mr. Kane, to get the Dragon Lady. And a very laudable job, too, I should say. But have you not heard of Sanjak? Who? Sanjak. Now, I don't know if I pronounced the name correctly, but have you not heard of the name? Sounds like something you take for a headache. Well, Sanjak is a headache. But who is he or she or whoever it is? Sanjak is fully as clever and as dangerous as the Dragon Lady. They're bitter enemies. Sanjak is, is a woman? I believe so. I know very little about her, but I do know she operates against the Dragon Lady. The native of the Heatherstone Plantation has mentioned her name in Whisper. Nobody seems to know who she is, how she works. Sounds like a ghost story, Mr. Kane. Yeah, perhaps it is, but after living here in Indochina, I've come to expect almost anything. And this rival of the Dragon Lady is no ghost. But how come you brought up the name of this woman, San Jock? If she's a rival of the Dragon Lady, then she must be on our side. No, no, not at all. She's smart enough to use you and Mr. Ryan and, well, even April as pawns in a fight against the Dragon Lady. She might use me. In fact, I think she has. Well, I don't quite follow you, sir. Well, let me put it this way. I said I didn't think Baron de Plexus was the one who trapped me in the temple and brought me food and water every day or so. I have a belief that it was this mysterious phone Oh, I see. Because you disappeared, Deplexus might be accused of getting rid of you. Yes, sir. Phone Jack will resort to all kinds of tricks to make trouble for the Dragon Lady or anyone who works with her. Phone Jack will rob and kill and do anything to wreck and destroy. I see. Well, enough of this idle talk. Let's all get started while it's still daylight. Be dark by the time we arrive. I want you to see that the plex is there for you. Let's head over this way. We'd better get there pretty soon, Mr. Kane. Sun's gone down. It's going to be dark soon. Mm, so much the better for us, Terry. But what can we do? I mean, we're armed, but... There's only five of us against the Baron's gang. Let's worry about that when we get to the airfield, Terry. Is it much farther, Mr. Kane? There's a path leading to a narrow wooden bridge. Do we take that? Yes, sir. That's the way we go. We cross the bridge. Your feet is just a little creek beneath, and then we come to a spot where we can get a good view of the entire airfield. Now, I'd better be sure that Carney and Big Stoop are coming along behind us. But there's no time for us to get lost. I'm not looking for a fight with the deflexes mob yet. Are you, Mr. Kane? Well, frankly, no. But we better be prepared for trouble, Mr. Ryan. The unexpected always happens in these parts. I've been around too long to expect otherwise. 
Well, this is all the deflection's property, I take it. Yes, sir. It's a big place. As big as the Heatherstone plantation where I was manager. As soon as we get beyond this bridge, you will see the airfield. What's that? Where's the fire? Well, that's the alarm signal. So that's the abitur. Boy, that made me jump a foot. An alarm signal, boss? You got this plantation wired for sound? Look here, Mr. Dunn. You might be interested. Somebody's crossed the floor bridge to the north of the field. The weight of their footsteps made contact with the electric wire underneath the stand. And here in the airplane hangar, a dare thing. Well, how do you know? Oh, the signal box. Small number drops down. Number five. That indicates the bridge location. Somebody has stepped on that bridge. Well, maybe it ain't nobody important. Oh, important has nothing to do with it. It's at least a hundred pounds weight on that bridge to make the contact that was in this bed. Oh, use of all times. Yeah. Seeing as how we're expecting that thing with the gold. I thought your plans were so well organized, boss. Uh, Baron? They are. They are. Then the hour, the plane should be back here with its passengers and their gold. There won't be any mishap. Yeah? Well, what about this here alarm signal? Well, anyone who is here when the plane lands can be a witness against us. That's a dead trespasser, is <laughs> Well, that's a dead trespasser. Wait, that's the plane signal. Must be coming in to make a landing. That's the pilot, I'm sure. Sending a signal. Yes. Yes, you've made contact. Come in. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Reflectors. Reflectors. Go ahead. Very well. I have to see it, my son. We'll be ready for you. Well, Mr. Dunn, our plans are about to bear food. That was my pilot. He just radioed me. The plane has its passengers and the gold. It will set down here very soon. Yeah, but what about... If the... somebody is trying to interfere with what I am doing... <laughs> Well, everybody at this field has their orders to shoot any stranger who comes in sight. Maybe it's not that, but I doubt it. He wouldn't take the risk of coming here. Well, we can't stay now. Well, gentlemen, there's the airfield. You we can get a good view from this spot. Well, that's the hangar over there. Somebody's in the place. I can see a light. There's a very small plane. There must be another plane, a larger plane, to touch it as a plane you told Yes, there is a larger ship. A job is to fly to certain spots in China, pick up wealthy refugees for their gold, bring them here. And then deflect this and his gang, take all the gold, and turn the refugees loose in the jungle, eh? Yes, sir. Right now, I suspect that the big plane must be a way after the loot. That's what you take the back to. Well, then I move we wait here a while. Until the big plane returns, then we can rush him and catch the whole mob red-handed. That takes a lot of nerve, Mr. Ryan. Well, Pat's got it. Well, I'm to think of it, maybe six actual turn of six. Besides, we can surprise him, and that's important. And you think we've gotten this far on a girl? You think the Texas knows nothing about it? I don't see how he could, but I'm willing to throw him with Pat. If he says, let's go in and bend the Baron's nose, then I'm all for it. Ah, but the Baron is expecting company. He's expecting somebody, although he doesn't know it's Terry and Pat and the others. And meanwhile, a plane with passengers and gold is due to arrive. I'll tell you more about all this in just a moment. You know, there's no time like right now to start drinking Libby's tomato juice. It tastes so wonderful and it's got so many vitamins that you want to drink a big, cold glass full every single day. Breakfast is a dandy time to drink it. Ask your mother to start serving Libby's tomato juice for breakfast or any time of day. Remember, everybody, patriotic Americans buy United States defense bonds and stamps. I hope each one of you boys and girls pasted another defense stamp in your book today. Well, Song Jack, woman rival of the Dragon Lady. Doesn't that sound like thrills in a great big way? Well, you're going to meet this clever, surprising, and dangerously different person very soon. Possibly tomorrow. Perhaps you can guess how and where you need her. Meanwhile, there's big stuff popping at the Deflectors Airfield. 
So stand by tomorrow for your share of radio's best transcribed adventures. We all have that friend who wakes up early to go get everyone McDonald's breakfast while the rest of us sleep in. This is your sign to thank them. And if you're that friend, this is us saying thank you. Just a friendly reminder that right now, get any size iced coffee before 11 a.m. for just 99 cents. And a satisfying sausage McMuffin with egg is just $2.79. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.